Definitely not. I wanted to ask Josh. I was over on your channel looking around. You you made a video talking about. I didn't watch it intentionally because I wanted to to let you talk about it. For sure. So you were either roommates or buddies with a convicted serial killer while you were in. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. How, uh, how did you meet him? And then what was that uh, friendship like or acquaintanceship, however it was? Yeah, I guess I should say acquaintanceship because me calling him a friend, I didn't realize people were going to get so pissed off about that. But um, I guess I should say acquaintance. Sure. Uh, I mean, I was in prison here as a disclaimer to everybody. It's not like I just, what am I supposed to go do? Go hang out with all the Boy Scouts and, and the people that went to too much church and got arrested, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, his name is uh, Clarence Heatley. He was uh, known as the Black Hand of Death in New York. He was a terror Um for a long time and he's a Talladega medium and um a lot of people are always like if this dude because this dude man he had like he kidnapped Bobby Brown for example that's what I discussed in the video there's a lot of evidence you know that the he kidnapped Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston paid the ransom money the dude was linked to like 13 murders I had no idea that this dude was that big a shit when I first met him uh he's just uh an old orderly now which is kind of ironic because in his criminal organization he had a set called the janitors that disposed of the bodies uh now he's a janitor for the rest of his life in prison well that was um, his prerogative yeah, he came full so, circle, karmatic, if nothing else. You know, how was how, yeah. how how did he murder people? Was he a strangler? Was he a like a yeah. prostitute a kidnapper and murderer? Yeah. What, so what the thing is, game? he wasn't a serial killer for fun necessarily. Like most no, other serial killers, he was a serial killer by definition of having a certain amount of victims. You know, but yeah, his typical thing was strangulation. Uh, uh, many of the murders were com were not committed directly by him. He was pinned individually with like thirteen, but like fifty have been linked to him and his crew. You know, they called him the Preacher Crew. Uh, there was mm -hmm. some big movie about it called Paid in Full, and uh, I didn't watch that. I actually read a few conflicting articles and apparently got some of my information wrong in that video. And boy, let me tell you, am I hearing a lot about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. But I had no idea that this dude was out on the streets, that he was a maniac terror, you know, that was like, they say if you overdosed on heroin in like the early or the late 80s, to early 90s in New York City or something like that, like it was his, you know, he had the whole police department bought off, he multi-million dollar. I had no clue that he was that big. I knew that he had been recoed. Um, I'm sure you guys probably know what RICO Act is. You know, the racket, racketeer influence, criminal, corrupt organization. You know, just big money oh. doing shady is shit. Is that like money. what they did for gangs where they could be like, they wanted to knock gangs down. And so they were like, well, if we do the RICO thing, then any sort of low level nonsense, we can connect transitively up to these big guys, right? Climb up the ladder. Yep. The mob. Yeah. That's what exactly. It's a mob like thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, and I had no idea. He's, I knew he was doing life plus 200 some odd years, but uh, the case was a lot crazier than I thought. And it was just interesting reading this because he's he's had a stroke now, I think. You know, he's kind of hunched over. He's got a walker now. He's in his 60s, if I'm not early 60s now, mid 50s, late 50s when I met him. And um, man, it's funny because I just, I don't know. Everybody seems to be weirded out by the fact that this dude was so evil, but I, I shot the shit with him almost every day. I thought he was funny. He had a gnarly sense of humor. And this is the joke that I told I in the video <laughs> that is the number one thing that stands out to me about this guy, all right? I went to visitation one time. I don't even remember who I was seeing at this point. I don't know if I saw my mom or one of my friends came to see me, but he was there with his daughter, right? And his daughter was, she had dreadlocks and she was holding hands with another woman the whole time. Uh, and they were, you know, clearly very affectionate. We were walking back and uh, he called me Spider. He called me Spider-Man. You know, he's got a Boston accent. I'm not good at accents, but he's got a very <laughs> clear cut New York accent. You know, he calls me Spider. He's short for Spider-Man because I wore my glasses when I was locked up. And we're walking <laughs> back, man. And I was like, hey, man, hey, it was good to see you in there, Clarence. You know, like, uh, what's your, he's taking another name now that I don't normally go into just in case people are trying to, he, he's a Muslim now, he goes by Muslim name. But, um, mm -hmm. and, and I was like, yeah, that was your, that was your daughter in there, huh? Or, or who'd you say that was your, your family? He said, oh yeah, that's my daughter, man. She's uh she says she's a lesbian now or something like that. That's a little girlfriend that she had in there. And I was like, oh, I mean, I didn't really know what to say to him. I was like, I mean, it probably took, you know, courage oh, for coming here and hot. Uh, yeah, I know. Right? What, what do I say? Well, that's kind of where we're going with this, because uh, uh, I mean, she kind of looked a little bit like Tracy Chapman. You know, she looked like she drove a fast car. Oh, but no. um, and I, I, so he was like, "Yeah, that's that's my daughter." She told me, and I was like, uh, "That probably took a lot of courage, you know, to come in here and tell her dad in prison, you know, that she's out of the closet now." And he goes, "Oh no, no, I don't care about all that. I was just telling her. I said, honey, listen, daddy's been locked up for a long time. If you're kissing women now, he's got to see it. All right." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what that's the cool. kind of interaction this guy is cool. That's what I'm saying. Like, shit like that. Maybe I've got a bad sense of humor, but I laugh my ass off when he said that. And I know he was, I, I hope he was just kidding. Yeah. If he wasn't, it's even funnier, I guess. I but, care if he's you know, what I laugh. What do we know about these supposed victims? Yeah, uh, wait maybe a minute. They, Who got hurt? Maybe, what were they up to that they yeah. were hanging around with this guy, you know, in, in, to begin Mostly with? drug dealers. <laughs> Oh, Those are drug dealers that owed him money. Okay. Like, well, just fucking a, show a bunch of no good nicks. A bunch of no good nicks. He was cleaning the streets. Look at that, man. You know, not he's just only are they dealing drugs, they don't pay in their the bills streets. on time. 
<laughs> it's a double whammy. <laughs> hey, no, the crazy thing actually about that Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown situation, Bobby Brown didn't even owe this dude money. Bobby Brown owed somebody else money for cocaine. This dude caught wind of it and went to that drug dealer and says, how much does Bobby owe you? And he said, 25 G's. He said, here's 25 G's. That's my debt. And he said, okay, I'm good. And so then Clarence went after Bobby Brown as the owner of the debt now. Basically, just real-life debt collection company. I've bought possession of this debt now. It's now in my hands. Uh, and That's went wild. after him and kidnapped him. Did he Damn. ask for more than the 25? When Way, he more. <laughs> <laughs> Way more. Way <laughs> more. Yeah, like 400 grand. Like 400 grand or half a million. Way Hell yeah, more. he did. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't, no, that wasn't no quick brief investment. This was, a, I'm about to extort yeah. the shit out of this guy. It's like a Wolf of Wall Street over there. <laughs> like, 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 yeah. He could have done that without buying the debt. No, right, he couldn't like, have he done it without that. the gun. <laughs> probably, but here was the thing, because I was thinking if he can't do that Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown's probably not going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, did you get the clearance? Did you pay my debt with uh, with Homeboy over on the other street? He's not going to ask questions mm-hmm. like that, but I think it would have been bad for Clarence's dealings with that drug dealer. He probably had no beef with that dealer, so he wasn't going to claim in this guy's debt. If he really wasn't connected to it, You know that could cause issues there, is what I assume. Mm-hmm. Well, didn't I didn't ask him, him about this because I didn't know all this shit. Here's the thing. Here's what I'm trying to get out. He kidnapped Bobby Brown and got Whitney Houston to pay a $400,000 ransom <clears throat> to get him back. That has nothing to do with the debt that he owed. Like He pretends that they're linked. He pretends it made it just, like it, it was justified an the, the kidnapping. Yep. But really, he could have done that without buying the debt. You're right. Absolutely. I agree with you. I see what you're saying. You're saying it was basically just an excuse that he had. He saw an opportunity and just exactly. weaseled his way. It kind of was credentials with the criminals, if nothing else. You know, like, oh, no, it was legit. He owed money, bro, and I just took mm-hmm. care of it. Bobby was returned unscathed. I actually had the video. I have the footage in my video of allegedly, I obviously don't know that it's real, of her, him jumping out and get them giving each other a big hug and stuff. But I was wondering if that's actual footage of it. Why was nobody arrested? Who who let Bobby out of that car? Y'all ain't going to pull that car over or nothing, you know? like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Y'all just gonna let him get away? It was a crazy story, though, man. And I only knew him as the guy that, you know, he was always chill with me, funny sense of humor. And I actually took inspiration from him in a way. And as, as dark as that sounds, that man's doing life plus 255 years, man, or life plus 245. He's not getting out. No. And the thing is, he well, thinks he know. is. Unless he's really He thinks that. That's what he says, Kyle. Really he says he never know. Yeah, unless he's super, super healthy. He's not. Um, he's, <laughs> he's doing what they all do after 25 <laughs> years, which is... uh get to the turn into the drink you know what i mean and uh getting a little bit quieter and they always kind of seem to lose humanity do, lose a little bit of their people, color after uh, 25 30 years 